you just know. Um, and it kills television. And writers' rooms think that they're perfect. They perfect scripts and they ruin TV shows in the process. That's what I think happens. Do you think would, I find the dialogue? I was watching a show on Showtime recently, and the dialogue was ba da da ba da da, very snappy patterish. Yes. Like nobody talks real on television. There's no organic dialogue and no organic no. speech patterns. It's all fucking. It's all. It's all clipped TV talk. Yeah, it is, and it's it's arrogant because what it is, it's it's a lot of uh, you know. I'm not being an asshole here, but there's a lot of collegiate TV writers who don't. You're right. Who just want want people to sound a certain way and who don't want the audience to weigh in and they don't want to let moments linger and you know um, but there's a way that unfunny people make funny that they're like this is I'm in a comedy right now I'm in a comedy right now that's what I always want people to say in sitcoms ne that Neil Patrick Harris and that uh, you know I'm a smarmy character yeah you better watch what I say because it's you know he just everything he's saying yeah. is dripping with this fake comedy thing he he wins these Emmys for comedy he's completely unfunny I, I, I don't that's my that's my opinion of his work I have no idea. He might be the greatest guy in the world. I don't care. But yeah. um, there's there's a lot of comedy that's worked that's just like, the, we're doing this. Like, I remember on Lucky Louie once, we changed dialogue on the set. Me and Pamela rewrote something that came to the floor, which was certainly my prerogative. It was Your show. my show. Yeah. And one of the writers took offense that we changed something. And I'm like, what do you? what's your problem? And he said, we worked hard on that dialogue. We vetted it. The uh, writing staff vetted the dialogue. He actually said that? Yes. And uh, so it was disrespectful for you to throw it away. To me, the idea of vetting, you know what vetting means? I only yeah, but not in the writing sense. Well, vetting, uh, like if you vet... If I was, by the way, honest, I would have said, what does that mean? But I wanted to just... Yeah, no, the I mean, because I don't know what I was talking about. I looked it up after he said this to me. <laughs> vet, the only time I ever heard vetting was in the con political context. When they pick a VP right. or something, they vet him, and it was, they, they, they analyze, find everything out they can about him, and then they, then, you know, they, they scrutinize. So when you vet dialogue, it's the same thing. You you look at a page of dialogue, and you analyze every line. Is this giving us all the information we need? Is this upping the stakes? Is this giving the character a motive? Yes, and we all approve as a, in a Congress of a writing yeah. staff, and we send it to the floor. And this fucking asshole career funny man who gave us all this job had the balls to just put his own feeling into it about what he thought it should sound like. <laughs> you know, it's just... But that's what... A lot of TV writers are like they think that that it's they think that there's this science to it that and it it's not even a science it's just a bullshit craft and Americans are forced to watch this shit over and over again. Keith Robinson, who you know is a comic from the cell, had a great way of putting it. We were talking about guys that aren't funny, and a lot of them, some writers are funny guys and some aren't. Mm -hmm. But he was talking about front of the bus and back of the bus guys, yeah. and not in a tough guy sense, but in a goofball. You know, right. if you're in the back of the bus, you're talking shit, you're being an asshole. Yes. And so a lot of those writers, they're front of the bus guys. And a lot yes. of, not all, but a lot of the alt comics, and some of them are actually very funny, but the ones that aren't are those people in the front of the bus where they try to find a formula to be funny mm -hmm. but they're not organically funny people there's nothing funny about a lot of those right. writers when you talk to them it's funny because a lot of alt comics would say the opposite they would think of themselves as the back of the bus and they would think as they would think of well formed and well trained and and solid comedians like Keith as a front of the bus, the bus guy. That's funny to me. I would put uh, him, Keith in the back of the bus. Yeah. Because he's black. And I, yeah. <laughs> no, but, uh, no, Keith, uh, Keith is, by the way, one of my favorite comics. Oh, he's is he a funny severely fucking dude? Severely underrated. Yeah. Every time I see him, he has a new bit, and it's funny. And here's why he's underrated, because he's fucking lazy, and he yes. won't do certain things. No, because he won't put himself out there. But as, as a guy, too, Keith yeah. is sickeningly funny. Uh, he's an abusively funny yeah. fucking dude. He, yeah. He's like sit on the corner and make people laugh. No, he's dude. great. He's great. No, and, and with Lucky Louie, the idea was putting just performers on a stage and getting them to do stuff. That's why the, write, the, writing, the, the writing vetting and perfectioning is, is part of what made the show have a mixed message. And I mean, I th I, in some ways, I don't blame people for not having liked it because we didn't do it completely the way I wanted to. We, we did it about 60% of what I wanted, and the rest of it, I trusted other people. And I don't blame them. They're, they, th those writers did what they were trained to do. And uh, they probably are succeeding at it in other shows. They were all very talented. I had a great writing yeah. staff. It just wasn't a writing staff show. I would never write with a staff again. When I you would write never do that. When you write now, because, again, you, you, you have an interesting way of thinking and doing things. Do you start, like, all right, I want my story to be this. 
and I'm going to finish here? Or do you just kind of throw out a bunch of different ideas and say, I'm going to put these together somehow at the end? It, everything, every, one, every, every episode is different in that sense. Some of them I, I know, like I have a flash of an idea, and it's a whole episode. Like I did at this episode about religion, and I knew that would be a whole episode. I wanted to tell you this entire story of this kid and that I let be me just to give it a context that meant anything. Um, being so scared of Catholicism and, 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 and being uh, sympathetic to Jesus and wanting to help him instead of just letting him hang there. Um, that to me was such a fascinating story and then bringing my mom into it and all that stuff. I knew that was going to be a whole episode and I, I knew it by the time I was, I mean, I, I almost thought the whole episode out in one thought, you know, and then I just sat down and wrote it. Uh, there are other things where I do one bit that's just a shred like I, I, you know, um, I want to see this happen, and then other shreds come together, and it ends up making a whole show. It depends. Other things come with start with one moment, like the bully episode that I did, where this bu- kid, high school bully picks on me, and that episode. Sometimes this happens. That story told itself to me, instead of me telling the story. Sometimes you. F- you know what I mean? When you follow your imagination mm-hmm. down a road and you don't even think you're in right. control of it. Yeah. I had the f- one moment in my head, which is I'm on a date and I get picked on by a kid. And I realize I can't, this is real life. I can't fight him. I'm a for, I'm over 40. I'm not going to fight him. And I'll say whatever it takes to get him away from me. That's the safe road. Why wouldn't I do I'm not in a mood. I'm not, I'm a human being. <laughs> yeah. But there's a girl with me, and she wanted. I was trying to have sex with her. So I just told myself that moment. I said, so what happens? And then the first step was her complete humiliation of me and saying, you just turned me off completely. And then I thought, but what if I, what would I do? Would I follow the kid home and beat the shit out of him? Would I get revenge on the kid? Um, And then I just told myself, I want to follow him all the way home. I want to follow him. I want the audience to be like, what's he doing? This is crazy. And I didn't know where it was going. And the story just took me to, there's his house. I walk up, who would I meet? Well, he's a kid. I'd meet his parents. What would I say to them? I'd tell on them. That's what adults do when other kids have a problem with somebody's kids. What would they do? Beat the shit out of them. How would I react? I'd say, hey, cut it out. How, you shouldn't hit kids. That's why he's like this. And I was telling this story to Pamela, who is a consultant yes. producer on my show. Pamela Adlon that played. I'm just saying it for them. Sure, sure. Played uh, Kim on Lucky Louie, my wife. I was telling her this story. I was hatching it in front of her. And I said, so I'm yelling at the father and saying, you shouldn't hit your kid. And that's why he's like this. And then she says, and then the wife, the mom goes, get out of here, you fucking queer. <laughs> like she, <laughs> she did this funny voice. And she said, then the mother starts slapping you. And I fucking howled laughing. She finished that for me. And so we went out and cast a woman with that voice. And we did the whole <laughs> thing. It was great. Uh, so sometimes it's like that. It's all of a piece, and it starts with one little, I want to see this moment. And rather than set up, like, have a phone call, I call the girl up, you know, I right. start a date, I go, who are these kids? Why are they like this? Da, 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 da. You know, I just, here's the moment. Sometimes it looks totally different than other episodes. Like, I like the show to feel different almost visually every episode. The music's different, depending on what we feel like showing. Um, what do you do when you have a thought that you want to articulate? Like, there's been things I'm, I'm writing that I can't, like, I know what I want it to be, but I just, I fucking sit down, I just can't, mm. I just can't articulate a certain piece. It's That's very, really hard. It's frustrating. Yes, I have a thousand great ideas that I've thought, I've gotten flush in the face with excitement, this is going to be so good, and I write down the note, write this yeah. idea, and then when I sit down, okay, I'm going to write, and I start interior bedroom day and it won't come out of me like I can't make it happen what do you just go back to it like you know I'll I'll write something down sometimes sometimes I keep it on a card and I go I know there's something valuable there and I couldn't sit down and write it once I started making the scene there's a few ways I've approached that moment some of them you get this sick feeling in your stomach like I can't write this or you start writing and it sounds fake and you stop I can't do something I don't enjoy that's why I can only do a show like this. If I was working on a show where I'm kind of like rolling my eyes and plowing through it, I would kill myself. And that's not a good thing. I think a right. responsible human being does things, grits their teeth and does stuff. Right. But if I'm writing a bit that's not 
inspired and that I'm not driven to write that's not flowing out of me. I just stare at the page for a while. Sometimes I'll start writing bad dialogue and then let it catch up to itself and get better. Right, right. Sometimes just having it written out, I'm like, good, I have it. It's not good, but I ha it exists, and I could go back and fix it. Because it's easier to go back and edit something or fix something than it is to actually just conceptualize something. Like I don't know that, that passion that's true. Is gone. I don't know that that's true. Really? I think sometimes when you write stuff, it has a, ten a ten tendency to gel, to harden, so that you can't make fix it again. See, I like to edit because it's. I, I have an emotion when I write anything. It's mm -hmm. like... It has to just kind of come out there, and then I can go back and fix it. But it's hard to recapture the emotion or the excitement sometimes. It is. That's that's a huge part of what we do. And a lot of times, like with stand-up, if, if a bit killed, most bits that really kill, kill because of the feeling you put behind them, right. because of the way you're being, because you're animated by the thought, not by the perfect 